Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to get an A in anatomy and physiology. During my undergrad, I took anatomy and physiology and many related courses all the way from intro to human physiology to gross anatomy and I got A's in all of them. And I'm not saying that to flex or anything or to be like, oh, like I got all A's. No, in reality, I'm not like crazy smart or anything. Like I don't have like, you know, a superhuman brain, nothing like that. But I will say that I did do some things that really helped me along the way to do well in the courses. And I also want you guys to get A's as well. Depending on your school and what you're studying, you might be taking that single class like anatomy and physiology as like a single course, or you might be taking an anatomy class and then a physiology class, like two separate courses. But regardless of how you're doing it, all these tips will help. In a nutshell, anatomy is where something is located in the body and then physiology is its function within the body. When learning about new structures in the body, you should have a systematic technique and pattern to help you study. For example, you could learn and master the anatomy of a structure first and then learn its physiology. So first you can see where it's located, know exactly where it is, and then you could dive into knowing its function. You also wanna learn and memorize in like the simplest form possible. I know that when you read a textbook, it might be like really complex and there might be a lot of different functions, but the simpler, the better. You wanna make sure that whenever you're learning about a new organ, a muscle, bone, whatever structure within the human body, that the way you learn it is very systematic and that that pattern is something that you keep doing regardless of the structure. Trust me, it will make your life a lot easier if you just keep your studying pattern the same exact way. What this really means is that instead of trying to like memorize like everything like all at once and just like learn and have all this like information like all in front of you, divide it up into different regions, layers, organ systems. Now luckily what I've experienced is that a lot of professors actually teach this way already just because it makes it a lot easier for them. It's like on one lecture, they'll teach a specific region, then the next lecture is like another region, and it just makes it easier for them, and it also makes it easier for you. Obviously, the human body is all over the place, there's a lot going on, there's a bunch of different structures, but if you divide and every single day, you just focus on a little part of that whole human body picture, you are gonna do really well and it will make piecing the whole human body puzzle together a lot easier. One of the biggest mistakes that I see students make with naming is that they really just like try to like memorize the name. They'll get a piece of paper, write down the name like literally a hundred times and that's all they know. Like they only know the name because they memorized it, but they don't know the meaning behind the name. Guys, the name of certain structures and even different body regions can help you tremendously when it comes to learning them. I'm gonna give a quick example, which I love giving the people and I try to like explain this to them. So let's say I throw these words at you. Flexor pollicis longus. You're seeing them on the screen right now and you're like, what is that flexor pollicis longus? Now, if you have to memorize them for a test, you might do what I said earlier. You might just like write like flexor pollicis longus a bunch of times, just write it down, write it down until you memorize it. But do you really know anything about it? No, you just know the name flexor pollicis longus because you wrote it down so many times. What if I told you, you could just break it down and flexor means to flex, pollicis means relating to the thumb, and longus just means long. When you piece that together, you come to the conclusion that flexor pollicis longus is just the longer muscle that flexes the thumb. So look at that, the name of that muscle told you if it was long, short, medium, longus. It told you what it relates to within the body and it also told you its action. Those three words give you so much information about that muscle. And you could do that with so many other structures within the human body. Keep in mind, a lot of different structures were named like literally hundreds of years ago. They have like medieval naming, Greek naming. So if you could just like memorize like a couple of them, you're gonna see like a consistent pattern. And once you start recognizing patterns and you start understanding names, like memorizing names will become so much easier. You don't have to worry about, you know, writing it down a hundred times. You'll literally see like, any structure and you'll be able to interpret what it means just like that. 
You don't have to be an artist to draw anatomy. It doesn't have to come out Picasso perfect. As long as you understand what you drew, you're completely fine. A huge mistake a lot of students make is that they just try to like visualize anatomy like from textbooks or you know from YouTube videos and that's basically like what they'll do on the exam. They'll try to like recall what they like saw or like a video they watched. But my tip that will really help you is that when you are first learning any structure in the human body, you should always draw it. Since it is anatomy and physiology, what you could do is draw the structure and like right next to it, put like a bullet point with its function. Now the way you wanna do this is sure, the first couple of times, yes, have like a picture in front of you or do it while watching a video, but then eventually you wanna be able to draw it without looking at anything. Drawing is just such an active process. You're sitting down, you're thinking, you're actively recalling, and then you're putting it down on paper and actually drawing out the shape of the structure, putting a bullet point next to it like with its function, do that and it will go a long way in anatomy and physiology. With anatomy and physiology, you're a lot better like studying a little bit of it every single day rather than like taking huge study sessions with it. If right now anatomy and physiology is like one of the core classes that you're taking, make it like the first thing that you study throughout the day. I would suggest even making flashcards. That way like you wake up and the first thing you do like for at least 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of your day, not that much time, wake up and go over the flashcards. Then in the afternoon, you could spend like 45 minutes, maybe an hour, just like drawing out the different structures that you learned that were on those flashcards. Then right before bed, you could look at the flashcards again. Guys, no matter how you do it, you just wanna have a really consistent routine and make sure you follow through with it. I kind of talked about this earlier, but there's this like study philosophy that pretty much says that you don't know how well you know something until you try to teach it. So while you're studying anatomy and physiology, going over flashcards, drawing structures, speak out loud as if somebody was in front of you and you're trying to teach it to them in like the most simplest terms possible. If you're learning about the anatomy and physiology of the heart, what you can do is draw out the heart, draw out the blood flow, like, you know, with arrows and stuff, but also like explain it like in brief terms while you're drawing it. That way you get two active methods of studying. You're drawing and you're also speaking. And when you speak, like let's say you're like, you know, trying to explain like a certain blood flow and you stutter a little bit and you like catch yourself, that means that you don't know it just well enough yet. Even with people in your class, I remember during my undergrad, there are times like right before class where like my cohort would like draw on the board and like we would just like teach each other like the different muscles. People think that when you teach, like you need somebody in front of you, but you really don't. You just have to like speak and talk it out loud. You could use a pillow and pretend it's a person. You could use whatever it is, a cup, a doll, a stuffed bear, just anything that can help you speak it and teach it out loud, trust me, do that, it will get you really far. Now I know that some of you guys, depending on what you're studying, you might be taking anatomy and physiology and you might also be taking a lab for it, which is really good because it gives you like that hands-on approach. The more hands-on you are, the easier it's gonna be to like just learn the structures and just learn everything. If you're doing clinical hours, try to connect what you're learning in anatomy and physiology to like what you're seeing during your clinical hours. Everything in the body happens for a reason. So if you can connect those lecture, those notes, everything you're studying, like all the paper stuff, and apply it to the real world, trust me guys, like bridging those two things is really gonna help you. Now let's say that you don't have any clinical hours, you don't have a lab, you really don't have like anything that you're shadowing or anything you're really seeing. What you can do is literally use yourself. If you're learning about the origin and insertion about a muscle, while you're going over the origin and insertion, literally like palpate, where the origin and insertion point is. If you're learning about an organ, do the same thing. Obviously an organ is gonna be really hard. I don't even think it's like possible to palpate as easy as a muscle, but just like, you know, put your hand over it and just pretend that you're feeling it and just having that like, I don't know, like that mind to body connection is really gonna make it so much easier to memorize and learn everything. This might sound really cliche. You always have professors being like, oh, make it fun, make it entertaining. It'll make your learning experience a lot better. But anatomy and physiology is really, really interesting. It pretty much teaches you how the body works. 
And if you know how the body works, then you know how we pretty much exist as humans. Unlike other classes, it's not too abstract. There are a bunch of different YouTube videos out there that you could watch. There's cadaver videos. You can even buy like a mini skeleton. There's a bunch of resources out there. Everything in the human body happens for a reason. We as humans carry out actions because of different physiological things that just occur within ourselves. And in respect to anatomy, everything is located somewhere because of a very, very specific purpose. Now with anatomy and physiology and the class side of it, it is up to you to make anatomy and physiology fun, learning, engaging, and just learn as much as you can in a very simple way. Guys, trust me, I know it might sound like a law. I know anatomy and physiology might be really, really overwhelming, but if you just follow my advice, it will really help you. All right, guys, that is pretty much all the advice that I have. Now that I could legally call myself a certified athletic trainer and that I have that background and foundation, I really wanna make more anatomy and physiology videos. So if you guys have any ideas on possible content that I can make, just put it down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below to stay up to date with my uploads. That is it for me, but always remember to stay hydrated.